So when I say running is life, I simply mean in the simplest, purest way, with all its ups and downs, running is the perfect metaphor for life. Mr. Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters, guests, I've been a runner for 15 years, and because I'm one of those non-rational human adults, I love running. Especially on those days I'm having the perfect run. The weather is perfect, my legs are propelling me further than my muscles even realize they're working, and as those powerful endorphins flood my brain, I embrace that very real runner's high. The perfect run is in life when you're having the perfect day. Each hair is in place, the kids are ready early, you nail that presentation to your boss, and your spouse loaded and run the dishwasher without you even asking. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect run is that week you are on top of work, your finances, and calling your mom, and had time to stay out late having a blast with your friends the way you did when you were 10 years younger. Perfect moments. Much of my efforts in running center on major race events. There is much glory in crossing over a finish line after conquering 26 miles, and then feeling the weight of cool metal hanging from smooth ribbon, gently adorning my neck. There's always a much longer story behind victory's reward. The months of getting up before dawn's crack, wearing out several pairs of shoes, and running more miles than most care to drive on a lazy weekend. <laughs> the race medal is earning that big promotion at work. After the unseen late nights, money spent on conferences, and all the sacrifices your family made. The race medal is finally holding your newborn child against your skin. After years of trying everything to conceive, months of morning sickness, and who knows how long of emotional struggle and moments of self-doubt that you could ever really get to this point. The glory of the hard-earned reward. But sometimes, instead of glory, there is betrayal. As a runner, you rely on your own body, but it can turn against you. From the casual charity 5K jogger to the top level Olympic athlete, many a runner has been well prepared only to have to pull out of a race due to leg cramps, digestive issues, best not discussed in polite company, <laughs> or any number of other things the body you trusted can do to turn on you and sabotage a run. Your body's sabotaging your run. Is that backstabbing coworker who took credit for all your hard work? It's that nice guy who you thought was your friend, and then realized all this time, he was just using you. The sting of betrayal. Running in Atlanta, I can't avoid the hills. Every leg muscle strains on the climb. My heart feels like it's pounding out of my chest as I just try to keep pace. And there's always at least one mirage of the top. It turns out to be nothing but a momentary plateau and vantage point from which you can finally see the rest of the hill. And then there's this thing runners do called hill repeats. Re-endure all of that, go back down to the bottom of the hill, and then do it again, <laughs> and again, <laughs> and again. <laughs> hill repeats are those spaces in life where everything hard seems to happen all at once. You're barely dealing with one crisis and then another hits. Hill repeats, or when that person you were sure you would spend the rest of your life with breaks your heart. And then you get laid off from your job. And then someone close to you receives a devastating diagnosis that you don't know how any of you are going to deal with. Unrelenting pain. Dramatic moments aside, most of my runs are actually quite unremarkable. Just one foot in front of the other on familiar, predictable routes. Comfortable, monotonous. Unremarkable runs are your daily grind. Get up, go to work, walk the dog, watch Netflix, go to bed. 
do it again. <laughs> <laughs> the life you like well enough, but perhaps occasionally wonder there should be more. Well, here's the secret to running and therefore to life. The worst mile I've ever dragged myself through was still 5,280 feet. That's 5,280 feet that I gained experience and built endurance. And as much as I might not want to admit it, the next time a hill pops up on my course, I'll be much better off for having endured those dreadful hill repeats. So I encourage you to remember that wherever you are in life, every day you get through is 1,440 minutes that you gained, learned, or built something. Running is life. And whether glorious, painful, or unremarkable, no run or day of your life is ever wasted. Mr. Consciousness.